Friday night, July 27th, 2018, full moon night out there, yes, in Diddy, and we are live on reallibertymedia.com on channel one there, the Freakers Ball Show page channel, and we're also live on the audio stream, RLM radio audio stream, which goes everywhere around the world, ah, the video does too, if you tune in from somewhere around the world, but <laughs> the audio stream is picked up at a lot more places uh, because it's on 24-7 live and the video stream is only on during this program. <laughs> so welcome to the Freakers Ball program here on Real Liberty Media, uh, wherever you may be tuned in from. Always glad to have you here with us. Yeah, we're bad. We're worldwide, not nationwide, worldwide. Uh, Moose Girl's had a little trouble with her computer, computing, as it were. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, yeah, Freedoms Network, they uh, got an extension and through August 23rd, which would be Beth Z's birthday. Uh, so they're good up until then. Anybody else going to donate this coming month? We'll find out. At the end of the month, I suppose. Uh, anyway, so uh, if you're listening on Freedoms Network, add it to y'all. If you're listening on RLMRadio.xyz, add it to you. If you're listening on uh, TuneIn or Internet Radio, uh, welcome. Welcome. Good to have you with us. Yes, indeed. And if you're here on the video where you should be in the chat there, good to have you, too. Uh, I see only one listener right now on the video stream. And that would be Miss Chloe. <laughs> Howdy, Chloe. Uh, anyway, uh, but we got all kinds of great folks over here in the Real Liberty Media chat. RLM Radio. That XYZ has the chat there, too, if you want it from there. But from the show page, the Freakers Ball show page on reallibertymedia.com, you can jump on into the chat and talk to the great folks that are here this evening, uh, like Mr. Barman and Mr. Cowboy Tech and myself and the Moose Girl. Asmo and Beth Z. Chloe. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there you are. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just running through. Yeah. The names. I was just running through the names here on the on the list chatters chat, chat chatters list of names. Uh, where was that? Oh, Beth Z. Uh, Chloe Chalcedoni. Another Chloe. <laughs> Hey, you got somebody sneaking in between you there, Chloe. Uh, I, I could make a comment there, but I'm not going to. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Don, DC Don, Graham Z, uh, who's next Friday is her birthday. Uh, another Don. Uh, uh, oh, uh, there's, yeah, anyway. Uh, we got Java Doctor. We got JJ's. We got Wanateco and his nickel, bag of nickels. And we got Meister Brow and Kate and Rain and the Fluke Bot. Rob works, Rome's aka Trust No One, the Phantom with a two at the end, the Colfax with a one one at the end, the Cyborg Noodle, which is uh, somebody's bot, I forget whose bot that is. Anyway, we got Dakota and Despawn and Frumpy and Kozu and Mo E Poxa 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 Plenty. Um <laughs> we got Prebib and Pone Sauce and Sock Puppet and uh Skittle, which is one of the Poxabots. And Mr. Slim uh, Jim Flim here in the chat. So if you're somewhere else, come on over. Join on in. Be part of the crowd. <laughs> uh, if, you, if, if it sounds like I'm talking a little funny here tonight. Well, yeah. Funnier than normal. It doesn't, but. All right. I, well, I wasn't sure because I, I, uh, I got this loose molar in the back. Ooh, and um, and I've been wiggling it because I want to get it. Oh, out of, I want to get it out of there, you know. It, yeah. And so it's moved up like a quarter inch. Oh. And and so the the this on the bottom, so the tooth on the top hits it, and I can. Right, right. I, I no, I hear you. I I get the, I get it. <laughs> I get like this clicking. Uh, it's like. That's a, okay. It's like right there. It doesn't hurt or nothing. It just it's just wiggling and it wants to come out. 
Or I, 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 it, I don't like it wiggling around like that. Right, right. I have a loose one, too. And <laughs> it happens when you get old. Sucks, but yeah, well, like I always tell my kids, don't chew ice. Ice? Really? If you chew ice, it fucks your teeth up. Yep. I, I had no idea. I used to chew ice a lot. That, that, Other wait, things wait, fuck wait, up your teeth too, but that's not wait, good for it. Wait a minute. Is not chewing ice a sign of sexual frustration? <laughs> what? No, I, wait, I did wait. it all the time when I was a little kid. Oh, maybe Moose is too hot. Right. Maybe maybe that's the deal going on here. Um, I don't do it now. Oh, okay, because I, I... I know, I can't. My I, teeth fuck. I can't chew ice. I, I, was, I was pretty <laughs> sure that... That chewing ice was a, a sign of sexual frustration. Yeah, his Benoit... Uh, All right, I'm going to bring Moose, sucks, but mo- whatever. Moose down a little there, which should make it sound like I'm louder. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I like that. I'd rather have you louder than you. Uh, but I'm never louder than you. <laughs> <laughs> I was a cheerleader. I can't help it. Anyway, I, I turned Moose down, so that should mean that I'm up. Good. I guess. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either way it works. Okay, good. Just as long as we're even. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so is the levels okay now? Are we, are, are we good to go there? And I was probably talking a little low anyway. Because, I don't know who you're talking to. Uh, Juan Otaku in the chat there. He said that oh, I could okay. gain up a little. Gain up mean mean I'm down. I'm down. Oh. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Crystal clear. All right. Perfect. Okay. I would recommend an internet KVRC or whatever you want. There's a bunch of IRC chat clients that you can get. You can set it up for yourself and have your own nickname and everything. And my life changed for the better when I did this. Because I was getting so frustrated trying to be in the chat room and not being able to be connected that I'm like, okay, I'll do a key, I'll do a chat client. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just a huge difference. I mean, it's just nice. So if you want help and learn how to do that, set it up, just let, let someone here know and we'll... Uh, make that happen. Yeah, it's simple. You. Simple as a breeze. Call me the breeze. Yep. Yeah, um, no, I've been using ADI IRC for a couple months now, and I'm digging it. It's a cool client. If you're familiar with if you were brought up on the old MIRC, uh, yeah. ADI IRC is like MIRC only with more modern features. But uh, same, same coding language and a lot of mostly the same interface and and uh, yeah. See, it's just so much better with your your own private chat client that like, you have more control over it, and you the connection's way better. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get the cutouts a lot as much. Every once in a while, you'll get a what do they call that a a a, a pig timeout. Time out or whatever they call it. Ping, 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 time out. Or you'll get that where everyone, a lot of people get wiped out. Out what? of there. Oh, the net split? Net split. But other yeah. than that. Yeah, you got no control over got... net splits. No, but. <laughs> all, all you can try and do at that point is uh, hopefully your server rejoins real quick or you jump on another server. Right, right. But with the, I'm just saying, with the internet, your own private internet chat client, it's just it's so much better. Oh it's yeah, just, much far far more stable, and you don't have to worry about surfing around and yeah, yeah. Right. I use KVIRC, but what is it? What are you using now, Grim? Uh, ADI IRC. Okay. Do you think I should switch to that? I don't know. If you're if you're happy with KVIRC, just oh, stick I'm with happy it. with KVIRC. Yeah, well, there you go. No, no, what it. If it, if, it, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it, right? Yeah, I like right. that. I wish the government would do that. My, my, mine was Follow broke. That. The only, that's the only reason I changed, just because mine was broke. Oh, okay. See, mine is not broke, so right. I'm not going to fix it. There you go. Great. <laughs> cool. Awesome. 
though? Yeah. Is the monsoon still going on down there for you? Oh, yeah, we're getting uh, thunderstorms and rain every day. Okay. Yep, I had okay. to go out and mow yesterday. Oh. You had to mow? Oh, my God. I know. It's a terrible chore. <laughs> but but la last year I bought a new mower. So that that really, really helps. Um, because it starts. <laughs> And that and that makes a big difference, and it also doesn't die with like you know, uh, just a, a, a slight amount of uh, uh, mowing. You know, if you get tall grass, whatever. Uh, my my old mower just died on me, and and it was a real pain in the ass to start. This one starts right up, zippity doo da, cuts through the grass. That's cool. You got just a push mower, right? Well, it, it, it's a gas mower. You will rider or push mower? Well, I have to push it. <laughs> well, so you don't ride it and have a steering wheel on it? No, but but I do oh. have a push mower with no no motor. I have one of those, too. Oh, you got one of those old school? I get, well, it's it's a new old school. Okay, well, I have I mean, one. I, I, bought, I bought it, it like, but it's in my garage. I, I bought it like five I years ago. Show. Yeah, and, you know, I, I used it a couple of times, but it, it really sucks on the tall grass. Oh, God, that would suck ass, dude. Um, when I was a little kid, we had one, too. My dad had one. He got it from my grandfather yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, if we didn't have enough gas, or, if, like, let's say the used more we had didn't work, guess what? We had to use that thing. Right. Well, I, I, and I didn't think, I didn't even, I think that's all we had when I was a kid. I don't think we had a real. Really? You didn't have a, a, a automatic or whatever, gas-powered? Right. No, we were poor. <laughs> yeah, well, we were pretty broke, too. It was the 70s. Everyone was fucking broke. Yeah. It, it, no. it, it has much changed. Everyone's it was, it was, still broke today. It was it was the 60s. Nothing changed, people. No, we were I, broke I, in the I, 70s, and we we're broke now. I, I saw, I saw uh, like, a chart, a graph, whatever, today. Um, and it shows that in 1973, I think it started, it said median income 34000 Right. For the U.S. Today, median income, 34000 See? And then, and then, and then, it, and then it, it showed a loaf of bread, 1973, 39 cents. Today, a dollar ninety six. Oh, fuck that. It's so, more than that. You're not making... It's the Walmart bread. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a dollar ninety six. You want to buy good bread, you're paying three bucks or more. I just make my bread. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, know who I does know. these fucking charts and shit. I don't believe any of these charts and polls anymore. It's like, whatever. All I know is my mom was broke and poor. My parents in the seventies, you know, my parents worked. We didn't have a lot of money. Well, flash forward to fucking 2018, everyone's still fucking broke. You know? Yeah, you what go. does that tell you? What does that fucking tell you? Yeah, you might want to take a look at the ingredients on that. Fucking big system. <laughs> Benoit, Benoit, you might want to take a look at the ingredients on what they call country health. Country health. <laughs> and he see if it's, uh, I buy that brand, too. I buy that brand sometimes. Because I imagine there's some But I like the 100% whole wheat. You can get the split top wheat for $1.99. If you want the 100% whole wheat, I'm, sometimes I'll buy Sara Lee because it's cheaper than the country heart. Mmm. Tasty sucrose. I the hundred percent whole wheat. So yeah, I hate white bread. I fucking hate it. I hate white bread. Well, store bought. <laughs> yeah, store bought white bread sauce. I mean, I love bread in general, but yeah. I don't like the store bought white bread sauce. It's so much different, you know. Well, it, white it, bread has a lot of sugar I mean, in when, it. when you if you if you start making your own bread, it's so much different. Oh, I'm sure. And, yeah. and, it's, and it's so simple to do. If you, just do you ever get, make, like, rye? You know, you can make whatever you want, but it's just so simple. You just dump the ingredients in. It takes, like, five minutes to do that. You put the thing in there, turn it on, and in and, and three hours, you got a nice loaf of bread there. It's not going to bread maker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. No, I know you love your bread maker. I know that. It's so simple. That yeah. quite, quite often. No. And 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 one loaf is actually two loaves. <laughs> oh, 
Are you okay? What? Oh, I was just talking about Zach real quick. He's oh. a little out and about. But anyway, um, so yeah, I I, I mean, I should get a bread maker. I see him at first sales, first stores a lot, but yeah, you can get a you can get a regular one, brand new, fifty bucks. Oh really? Oh, okay. I don't think I'm gonna be getting one. I don't need. I'm not gonna be needing to make bread. Well, like, whatever. So you yeah. Make sandwiches for lunch or whatever. Toast in the morning. Right. Yeah. No. Oh. So do you yeah. freeze the bread or do you just eat, make one loaf at a time? Well, one loaf is two loaves, so. Oh, okay. So I'll, you know, either put put half of it in the freezer or not. It it, it stays all right in, in the fridge for you know a good week. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now you gotta start making your own butter. Oh yeah, well I, I, need, I need to get a one of those uh, bu- buxom girls in a churn to do old that. Cool. Yeah, get <laughs> an old butter churn. <laughs> well, first you have to have a cow or a goat. Right, right, right. <laughs> get have a cow or a goat. So. It, might, it, might be, it might be a little too far. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, she's far stretched out there. All right, let's kick it off some jams here. Let's do that. And uh, oh, here we go. Um, and we will be back with more enlightening conversation. Oh, absolutely. We'll talk full moon, about full moon Friday the thirteenth. No, Arr- full moon, not Friday the thirteenth. Sometimes we have full moon and Friday the thirteenth at the time, but no, this two, week it's just full moon. Two weeks ago we had Friday the thirteenth. That was yes, on the uh, no moon. Yes, and this week but we now it's the full moon Friday. Twenty seventh. So Enjoy, uh, people. rock them blues away. Be back. Am I not on? Was I on before? Oh, did I mute? Did I mute? Am I here? Am I gone? Hang on. Let me check. Let me check my. Let me check. Let me check my thingy here. <laughs> I muted. Well, I, I guess I was. I, I guess I had the mic on the whole time, and I muted when I came back. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, in case you missed it, since I probably muted, we started off there with Mustang, or ended there with Mustang Sally by Wilson Pickett. Before that, John 5 and the Creatures with Ears to the Crazy Ones and kicked it off there with ACDC Rock the Blues Away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, how, I, know, I know how to use this microphone. I've only been using it <laughs> a day. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, you know, they don't make cars like they used to. Like, I've seen so many classic cars around here lately. It's just awesome. Like, awesome. I saw this kick-ass awesome. GTO today. Yeah. Fucking mint. People, like, I think it's awesome that people restore cars and keep cars going, like old cars. I think oh, it's sure. awesome. It is. It's great, they, you know. Yep, they used to make them better. They used to be made with... Not as much plastic, you know. Yes. And just, I remember being my my grandfather's Corvair was like a '58 Corvair, maybe a '60. I don't know, something like that. Hey. But that thing was so awesome. I remember even riding around with him in it. Yeah, you know. Um, that, were, that was a cool fucking car. Cor- Corvairs were pretty car. good cars, but but then Ralph Nader screwed them all up. Yeah. Yep, freaking Ralph Nader, man. What? I said, I know. <laughs> Remember he put out that, uh, I guess it was a book, Dangerous at Any Speed? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was dissing the Corvair all over the place. But, oh. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the Corvair. It was a good car. It was a Chevy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Had they had the pancake engine like a Volkswagen, you know? Yep, yep. Yep. 
I remember riding around with my grandfather. I was like four years old or five years old. God dang. <laughs> This was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, I'm still a car girl. I love old muscle cars. I love even the old Model Ts and stuff, but I'm really a fan of, like, the muscle cars. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. GTO, Mustangs, Chargers. You know it. All right. Well, um, I came across this article there okay. during that set, and since you were talking about this, um, mm -hmm. I, I guess we get to talk about it. It says, okay. "You know what's better than boning?" Oh, <laughs> uh, a delicious. What do you mean by boning? <laughs> a delicious mouth of ice. Uh, what do you mean by boning? It's been that long for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know if, if you're talking this playing time, yes, I know what yes. you're talking about. Anyway, a delicious mouth of ice is apparently better than boning, <laughs> according to this article. What? what? I don't agree. Well, well, just like listen to the article. <laughs> listen, listen to the article here. It says, "Listen, there are fewer things better than engaging in sexual congress with another human being. The first is pizza." The second is Lisa Frank stickers. Who the hell is that? And the third, <laughs> the third is having the bed all to yourself and sleeping on a fucking diagonal. And then there's ice, refreshing. <laughs> sure, better than sex. Ice is awesome. I I agree. Ice is awesome. Uh, be, be, better than sex. You decide. Unless uh, you're talking about winter ice. Yeah, whatever. Then that's not awesome. I, I don't think no. that's what, no, it says a mouthful of ice, not your, oh, okay. so there's not, 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 a, not a driveway full of ice. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the reason we're even talking about chomping on ice is because a new study <laughs> suggests that for some people, ice isn't just something to put in the drink or slip down the shirt of an unsuspecting friend on a cold day, <laughs> but that it's a need. Some people allegedly crave ice. That they've got to have it, and it's all because of an iron deficiency. And before you ask, no, water just won't do it. This bit I agree with. Ice is at least ten times more fun than stupid water. And it's just yeah. water less than ice, ice less than sex, if you're following <laughs> along. <laughs> Here's some uh, more information about the condition <laughs> called pagophagia. Okay. <laughs> Uh, from USA Today. I, I guess that's how you say it. Maybe it's pagophagia. <laughs> it could be pagophagia. I, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Pagophagia, pagophagia is a type of a pica, a disorder that makes people crave and eat non-foods like, right, dirt like dirt and clay. Uh, the, the Learning Channel has turned into reality TV shows. Pica. They're learning. It's gross. These people have a. These people have a serious. They eat dirt and rocks and stuff. Uh, apparently, weird stuff. That's not the same thing to me as ice, though. Ice to me is frozen water. Like I used to chew it a lot when I was a kid, just because I thought it was cool to do it. I don't know why I did it. I just did it. All right. Well, anyway, the study author Melissa Hunt says that this cognitive boost may be related to the mammalian diving reflex, a trigger that causes okay. blood to flow to the blood flow to the brain when a vertebrate is exposed to cold water. Okay. According to, I get the, that. According to the study, which was published in Medical Hypotheses, uh, researchers yes. tested participants who are living with anemia and non-anemic control with an ADHD assessment. Before the assessment, some participants were given lukewarm water, some were given ice to chomp. The, those you anemic... can't chomp water, though. The, those anemic participants who snacked on the ice did much better on the assessment. This could be uh -huh. due, due to the pagophagia. Uh, it could also uh -huh. be due to the fact that anyone who freezes their mouth off before an exam might just be a little more awake and alert. <laughs> While the study has yet to be replicated, one hematologist who criticized it agrees that some of his patients just love ice so much that they would literally marry it if they could and then mourn their life mourn their life choices after the fact 
I had one patient tell me, I love ice. It's better than sex. <sighs> Whatever. If you're not if you're not into ice like that, you could also uh, use it to lose weight. Questionable. Or just say, fuck it, and remind anyone who likes ice uh, that chewing it is also a sign of sexual frustration. And then wander off before they tell you it's a myth. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I don't chew ice anymore. So there you go. I'm not sexually frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't really get it, uh, but that's what the <laughs> article says. But I, I, I had heard that myth, I guess they call it a myth now, that uh, I, chewing ice is a sign of sexual frustration. Oops. <laughs> anyway, here's the link for that, if anybody wants to check it out. It'll be in the post-show blog, anyway. <laughs> Better than boning? <laughs> What's boning? <laughs> I knew what you meant. I, yeah. you know, <laughs> I guess in the butchered field it's called deboning, so I guess I was off, so it didn't even, the reference didn't even make sense. But yeah, I know what you meant by boning. I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh God! And I still have no. shelter. I still have no idea who Lisa Frank is and why she has stickers. I do. It's, it's these old this this illustrator that made stickers back in the eighties and shit. It was it's stupid. That reference was lame. They should not have put that in that article. But I think right. they were trying to be funny. Well, Jezebel dot com, whatever they're they trying are. to be sarcastic or funny by putting that in that article. Hey, who doesn't like Hummers? <laughs> uh, I'm talking the vehicle. Oh. If you need a oh. Hummer as a guy, the Hummer, the vehicle, like one of them big old fucking ugly ass. Yeah, things, no, those are horrible. That means you got a small dick. I'm just saying. Well, they're, they're horrible cars in the first place. But, right, they're terrible. Why would you want one of them? They're overpriced. They're fucking. Oh, I don't think they even make them anymore. I, but I do see a few around once in a while still. So. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Right. So, I mean, and I don't know how it is in other countries, but I do know in America, America, anyway, um, that we're, some people in this country are very materialistic, like too much so materialistic. Sure. And I've tried to not be materialistic. I've actually tried to not be as materialistic. You know what I mean? Right. And I've tried to be, like, a good human, quote-unquote, but, like, recycling and picking up garbage when I see it in areas where it shouldn't be, if I'm capable of it, you know, like, if I come across an oil spill, I don't think I can do that myself. Clean that up. That would be But tough. if I'm up in the Boundary Waters or up on some lake in northern Minnesota and I see some garbage on a rock, that someone, because, you know, there's big, huge rocks that you can, like, pull up to and sit on and stuff. Mm -hmm. People, like, they have garbage there. It's like, so I picked up the garbage. Well, so that's just, very you know, good of you. There was garbage there. It's like, why the fuck would you leave garbage here? That's a good question. So I'm, right. I'm trying to do my part to, like, take care of the planet in my own little way. Okay. And I don't even know if recycling is legit, but I do it, you know? Yeah. It's because I think it's good to not have as much garbage, you know, as much garbage going in the landfill. Well, whether, whether it is or not, I mean, you know, you don't want trash laying around wherever you go. Right, exactly. And so <laughs> I do what I think I can. What I think, who knows if it's doing any good? I don't know, but it makes me feel better. Right? Yeah. And now that I have this garbage company that does the composting, it's great because I am throwing less garbage in the actual trash cans. No, I, I wish they had that here too, but they don't have it here. Right. I'm not throwing the peel, the potato peels in the garbage. I'm not throwing any of the peels or any, like, let's say fruit goes bad or something. I just put that in a fucking compost bay. Right. And then... You know, if, like, the potatoes go bad or something, I put them in the compost bag. Or the potato peels, I put those in. Even my coffee filter. 
they'll go in the compost bay. The filters themselves? Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. They're they're compostable. Pa it's paper. Right. I don't so, use anyway, I, I, I yeah, don't use filters I'll anymore. But what? So I, I don't use filters anymore. What do you, how do you make your coffee then? Uh, the percolator's got a got a thing. So you, you just know? use the old school like is it electric or on the stove? Uh, on the stove. Oh really? You got one? Oh, that's cool. See, I used to love that sound when I was a kid. When I wake <laughs> up to my grandparents' house and they had that fucking coffee percolating, a percol that sound is the best sound. I, the I just, smell. It's a, yeah, I just yeah. love that. I mean, the, the electric coffee pot that I have, it kind of tries to make that sound, but it's not the same kind. Of well, and think of it this way too. Okay, let, let's say you make your coffee. In, in your drip maker. It yeah. goes through there and whatever you got, you got. But if right. you make it in a percolator, maybe you don't like it. It's not quite dark enough. Let it right. perk another five minutes. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Good point. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I just used to love, I remember that as a kid. And then I just love those percolator coffee pots. You can still buy them brand new, but you're better off getting like a, a good used one, old ones from the 70s. <laughs> no, they're still great ones. Just, yeah. The, I, I, I bought mine on Amazon, you know. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah no, I'm going to check it out because it, but it takes a little bit longer for it to brew, right? Yes. Yes. See, that's the thing that people don't like. Right. Well, I, I don't I don't need two-minute coffee. I, I can wait. I, you know, I, right. I, I get See, up. I could do that, too. If I start it right away, if I have it set up the night before and start it right away in the morning, I could do that. Too. Yeah, I, I get up in the morning, I, 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 I take a whiz, and I go in there, and I, and I make, yep. you know, get the coffee already, put it on the thing, and I come in here and open all my programs that I have to open every day, and um, try and focus my eyes. <laughs> That's always the toughest part. Yeah, I can't <laughs> drink hot coffee. I drink my coffee warm. And then, and, then, uh, and if you want it, you know, cool it off, you can put a little little, little cream in there or whatever. Right, that's what I do. I just put cream in there, cools it down. Yeah. Yep. But speaking of things like coffee and whatever. Yeah. Uh, this is from HighTimes.com. California today. July 27, 2018. California seeks to enforce separation of cannabis and alcohol. Idiots. Uh, California regulators... What, Grim? Idiots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> California regulators have issued an advisory that delineates clear separation between cannabis and alcohol in the state. The memo from the California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, ABC, on the Cannabis Portal website, was published on July 25th. The advisory is a list of frequently asked questions received by the ABC and the department's responses. Dual licenses, okay. The first question the memo addresses is whether a person can hold both a license to sell alcohol and a license to grow, sell, or process cannabis. The ABC advises, of course they do, that this permissible act or the Medicinal and Adult Use Cannabis Regulation and Safety Act include helping holding both types of licenses. However, however, holding the two licenses is apparently all that is allowed under the rules. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... So it comes down to licensing. Basically, yeah. Of course <laughs> it does. And then it says, you know, under the regulations, alcohol and cannabis license holders are not permitted to conduct both businesses at the same location. All right. So enjoying a beer and a blunt at a bar is out. No, you can smoke it there. They just can't sell both things at a bar. They can't sell pot at the bar. Oh, and no cannabis cocktails either. What? Come on. There's all kinds. There's, there's, there's all kinds of cannabis beers now. Right. Oh yeah, they have one now at the bar. I just was at Horton House. It smells like pot. It but, smell, it's called hemp beer, but it smells like weed. But but does it have actually any any weed in it? No, no, no. It's just from hemp. It's hemp beer. No, well, if it does have THC content, it's minute, minute because it's made from hemp. 
Yeah. But it smells like weed. It, it does. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. I tried to, it was actually really good. I, I did a little sampler. It was good. It was tasty beer. Okay. I liked it. It was, called, it was called Emperor's something. Temperers. Temperers. Hem- Temperers. Not em- Temperers. <laughs> yeah, not Emperor. I like it. <laughs> Temperer. <laughs> uh, Temperer Ale. <laughs> they're, they're just so stupid with all their regulations. I know. It's insane. Well, they want to get their piece of the pie. The government doesn't want people to make money on their own. They, it drives them crazy. They want their cut, and they will get it however they can. Absolutely. They get it by, I mean, the Eau Claire County just passed the fucking deal pack. When I heard about it on the news one week on the radio, driving to work, I'm like, he's like, the, the news announcer's like, oh, yeah, a uh, uh, thing went to the fucking uh, city council or the Eau Claire County board to see if they want to pass a $30 wheel tax in the county. It's like, no, no. You know what I mean? I'm already oh. paying $75 for my license plate tab. Now right. my county wants to charge me $30. For what you call it? A wheel tax? Wheel tax. W-H-E-E-L. A wheel tax. A wheel tax. Now, so, okay. So so it would be 120 bucks. So, so it would be 120 bucks for your car. Yeah, it would be 75 No, 105 75 plus 30 So it's, it's 30 bucks. So it's basically... <laughs> Thirty bucks for four tires. Okay, so if you have a motorcycle, it's only fifteen. Yes. So now, okay, they seven fifty a tire without even knowing how to allocate the extra money. Okay, yes. so my question is: is why are you doing this exactly? Because you have no idea what to do with the money yet. They just know they want this money, dude. Oh, absolutely. They want this fucking money. They want to impose this thing on these people in this county. And not just the city of Eau Claire. It's countywide. Crazy. So the rural farmer out there in the outskirts there in Augusta, he's fucked. Because if he's got tractor, you know, what does it apply to tractors or just, you know what I mean? I didn't read the whole thing. I don't know if it applies to so, every so if you got a, wheel, vehicle that you own. So if, if you got a pickup with dualies on it, then you got to pay an extra you know, 15 bucks. What about a bicycle? Are they going to put it on that, too? It's like, this is out of, this is bullshit. This is the reason I don't like, this is one of the reasons I can't stand government. Is they just do this stuff. They just impose these things on you. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Night, like, Grammy. They just impose this shit on you, and you have no choice. You know? Yeah. If I don't pay the $30 thing by the, the the date I'm supposed to pay it or whatever, then they're going to make charge me a late fee. All right, let me read this yep, thing that Grammy posted. That, yep, governments are, th- it's a thug, it's thuggery. It's right. uh, l- l- let me read this thing Grammy posted. Okay. It's from Minds.com. Uh, what a profound little paragraph. Stated way back in 1931 and says it all. Mm-hmm. You cannot legislate the poor into freedom by legislating the wealth out of freedom. Right. What one, what one person receives f- for without working for, another person must work for without receiving. The government cannot give to anybody anything that the government does not first take from somebody else. When half of the people get the idea that uh, they do not have to work because the other half is going to take care of them, and when that other half gets the idea that it does no good to work because somebody else is going to get what they work for, that, my dear friend, is about the end of any nation. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. Uh, right. Dr. Adrian Rogers, 1931. Yep. <laughs> and that, that was during the Depression. Yeah. It's a oh, yeah. Yep. So. I mean, okay, so one lady says on the, on the thing, 
Supervisor Sandra McKinney explained, I just don't think the solution is to always keep taxing people, especially people who are really struggling to survive. Right. She said she voted no to the wheel tax, tax partly due to the fact that she'd hoped to continue the conversation with the seasonal player in Altoona, whatever that means. Right. She said, we did add to the language that this would be looked at every year, and I did vote for that. Well, yeah, so they're going to just pass it every year. Oh, sure. I mean, it passed one year, and they decide about it. It's like, you know, you don't even give people a choice. You know, I'm already paying through the ass to have this home, to quote-unquote own this home, you know. Right. Because, But I don't, because I have to rent this lot for $3,000 a year. Right. you got to pay the, the extortion check. money. Yeah. And you know what? I can't, I'm not going to be able to do it. Like, it's hard. Sure. Not to mention the fact that you have to have homeowner's insurance. You have to. Keep yeah. Up. I mean, you know, you, don't, you never the know. The state will enforce it on you. If you do not have homeowner's insurance. No, you in don't. State, no, no. You, I, I, you, could, you could drop your well, homeowner's if, insurance. I take that back. If your house is paid off, you do not have to Right, have and it. it's not the state that enforces it, it's the bank. Exactly. <laughs> right. But if your house is paid off, the bank has nothing to do with it anymore. Yeah. But if you want to ever do anything with your property, you have to have insurance. You, it's just so right. hard well, to Well, you have to have it, it anyway. You can, I you're I mean, taking a huge risk by getting out of it. I, yeah, I, I mean, not, it. not not only dealing with the, the the loss of your property due to whatever or damage right. to it from whatever, but if some right. asshole comes walking up your drive and trips, yeah. and he sues you and you don't have insurance, then you're fucked. You're screwed. Yeah, yeah you're fucked. <laughs> so exactly. So you, you got to have that that you know, um, you, you know, even if you're not worried about. Anything in your house, you, I guess you could probably just get liability only home insurance. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you can get the lowest amount that you can get, you know, possible. Well, but, yeah, but uh, you know, right. Whatever. But you got to You should have something. Otherwise, you're just it's such a. I mean, one, one thing you can, a, one thing you can do on your home insurance is just jack your uh, your uh, what, what do you call them deductibles? Deductible. Yeah, just jack yeah. your deductibles way up. And <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, then it'll it, be less. The more, it, the higher you. Deductible, your deductible, the less your insurance. Right, yeah, but 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 then if something ever happens, you know, you got to cover that much money before you, the insurance kicks in. Right, yeah, you know, if the wind right. blows your roof off, then then that, that's all you because. And your deductible is <laughs> five grand. Well, you better come up with five grand before the fucking insurance kicks in. Exactly. Right, which that could be hard. I don't know a lot of people that have five grand laying around. In savings or whatever. Yeah, my my uh, my uh, taxes, property taxes, come out. Uh, it's under a hundred bucks a month, but it's getting pretty close. Mine's like one thirty-five a month. Yeah, I, I pay it in every December, and it's. Or no, it's more than that. Mine's it, it started. It started off like nine hundred, and now it's up to like almost eleven $1 hundred. My homeowners is one thirty-five a month. My fucking property tax is two fifty a month. Yeah. It's too much. I can't. It, it's too hard. I'm going to. The best thing I could do really probably at this point is just sell this house. Then what, though? Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, then I, I, I have some money. I can go rent somewhere, you know, or I don't have to pay $3,000 a year, you know. Right. That's a lot. It's it's like it's like three dollars less than three thousand. So I call it three thousand. Like twenty nine <laughs> something. Ben, the price of whiskey is too damn high. <laughs> the price of everything's too damn high. The rent is too damn high. So I get my gas in Mondovi because they have a mid grade non ethanol gas there, and it's cheaper than the high grade non ethanol. Yeah. The guy told me he's really cool. The people at the privately owned gas station. Right. He's like, we sell the crap out of this mid-grade non-ethanol. I'm like, good. He's like, yeah. He's totally against ethanol gas, too. The owner of the gas station. You know? Good. Yep. Good. That's bad. It's bad gas. Bad juju. All right, let's hear some more music. <laughs> yep, let's do that. Let's All say, righty. If you can, 
His first buy track. Not, buy non ethanol gas. That's right. Especially Anyways. for your lawnmowers and snowblowers. Absolutely. This yep. first this Otherwise first track a is a cowboy tech request. Enjoy. Oh yeah, Freakers Ball favorite there. Email Ink Man on the Throne. And as Juan Taco points out there in the chat that it's not the man on the throne that's a problem. It's the throne. But if you're going to be throwing tomatoes, rotten tomatoes at somebody, you don't want to throw them at an empty chair. You want to throw them at the guy up there. Anyway, before that, we had uh, Greta Van Fleet with When the Curtain Falls. That's off their new one. And we kicked it off with Gary Clark Jr. come together uh, for Cowboy Tech there. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, ready, ready, rad. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. That was yeah. very good. I liked it. So we have an election coming up here in Wisconsin, and I'm just going to touch on this a little bit because I have paid no fucking attention to this, and I will tell you why. I don't know if I'm going to be right or not, but because I do know that a fuck a lot of fucking people that call themselves Democrats in the state from the Democratic Party or support the Democratic Party. And there's, you know, there's some Republicans, but uh, it's a Democratic state for the most part. Anyway, the governor, the the election for governor is this term, right? This time. Right. And in Wisconsin, there is no term limits for government, governor. And so I believe that the same thing's going to happen This happened last time, is that Walker will win again because basically Walker's bought and paid for by the, the uh, Koch brothers. Koch brothers. Well, I call them the Koch brothers, but they're the Koch brothers. It's K-O-C-H brothers. But they're bought and paid for. He is bought and paid for by them. Okay, and to get around them is going to be very difficult. Even you know, even though this state's probably primarily Democratic, Walker's still going to win. Sure. I mean, they tried to fucking throw him under the bus and recall him, and it didn't work. Right. The last time he won, and it's like, guys, do your research. Don't you get it? The thing you should be fucking worried about right now, or what you should be doing and putting all your time and effort into, is getting rid of the term, you know, getting term limits in in place. Because right. no matter what candidate you have going up against this guy, he's not going to win. So your first move should be get make sure there's term limits for governor. There you go. If you're going to believe in this system... And you're going to want it to work for you. That's where you got to start. you got to be asking yourself, why isn't there term limits for governor in this state? What's going on? Yeah. What is preventing that from happening? Uh, and I, I, you're going to see it's going to be a money trail. It's going to be all about money and control and power, just like in other states, too. This is just this is not unique to Wisconsin. No, I, I think right? zero, zero terms would be a good number. Yes, zero terms would be my number, and, but <laughs> if you're going to believe in the system as it is right now, then that's what you should be worried about, because yeah. your fucking little Tammy Baldwin ain't going to beat Scott Walker because she's basically trying to beat the Colt brothers, well, and I, she can't do that. I, I can already tell you who's going to be New Mexico's next governor come okay. November. That room? Well, right now, we've, we've got this... Uh, uh, Susanna Martinez. Uh, Susanna Martinez, she's like a total neocon. Yeah, okay. Like a John McCain type? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. warmonger. Yeah. Right. Uh, but this yeah. time coming around, we're, we're going to get this Lujan Grisham woman. Oh, great. She's a, 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 a my best way to reference her would be 
a cross between Hillary Clinton and oh, Nancy God. Pelosi. Oh God! She, she's oh some, God! She, <laughs> she's going to be worse than <laughs> she, she's what? she's going to be horrible, but she's going to win. She, she's got it, she's got it locked. Um, she's got the backing, right? What? Who backs her? Anybody we know? Well, whatever. Uh, what, company. It's going to be a company or something. Like, I, I, I have no idea who backs her, but but the guy that got running against her is uh, uh, this old fart that's been in, in the Senate for or, <laughs> or in, the, in the House, I guess. For uh, Hillary Clinton versus flat mixed with Nancy Pelosi, really? Yeah. Would that be a nice ass? Oh Come on. no, no, she. Are well, you kidding me? She, she's horrible. The, the, everything that, about that her is horrible. Be a nice ass. And, I don't care. Oh yeah, no, you can never make a nice ass out of that company. But 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 on, on a positive note, we might get legalized marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> which which you, which you so never got which you which, which you never got to get uh, under the neocon. <laughs> no, I guess no, uh, not, not, no. So 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 the whole state may go to shit, but you get legalized marijuana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit in one hand. Uh, Just, what is that saying? <laughs> Shit in one hand and piss in the other. Uh, no, uh, Shit in one hand and hope in the other. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what you got there. I mean, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it is a good thing for the legalization of the weed, but, you know, like, at the same time, we've been saying for a long time. We don't want the legalization. No, we don't, but on. I'm just saying that, you know. We just want, right. <laughs> but I think, I think that we're coming out of prohibition as far as the weed because they're well, realizing that it is medicine and it helps a lot of people. And, and plus the hemp factor is also beneficial because you can make so much, so much out of hemp. I mean... Right. You don't have to wait for a tree to grow full term before you can make have something that can make paper or fuel or exactly. clothing. All kinds of stuff. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, just all your foods and whatever that you can Right. You know, benefit. even pot seeds are beneficial to people. Right. I mean, oh, it's, here's it's, a, here's it's a, been a, prohibition. <laughs> a plant has been under prohibition for a very long time. Here's another New Mexico thing that's that's what? coming up. Here's here's another New Mexico thing that's coming up. Okay. Uh, from KOB.com. Uh, KOB4 is the Albuquerque News Channel, or one of them. Uh, anyway, it says, New campaign aims to combat opioid abuse in New Mexico. Oh, okay. okay I, I came across this on Twitter earlier this week, and I and I, I tweeted back at him, well, the other way to do that, or the best way to do that, is to just completely deregulate marijuana, which right. I'm sure the state of New Mexico is never going to do. <laughs> right. Well, I said a long time ago that if we had been legalized a long time ago, we wouldn't have this big of a problem as we do with meth and shit like that. Because people wouldn't be so desperate to get high. Did you guys hear you that know, thunder? They, they, would, they would be all chill and something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, and it's such a different drug. It's such a different high, though. So you really, you can't really compare. But I really believe that weed being legal or free, even even before the crack thing happened, you know? I mean, right. even before everyone was all fucked up on crack. Now it's heroin and meth. It's just like, it's... It, and then it's opioids, too. Prescription yeah. drugs. You can see why Big Pharma suppressed and had lobbyists and shit suppress the league of the freedom of weed. This goes way back. Medicine used to have weed in it. You know? Right. Cocaine and, used to be prescribed. Or you could just buy it over the counter. Right. I mean, yeah. think about that. Think about it. You know, as, if, as, if you think about it, it just makes your head, you know, your head starts spinning, but it's true. It's all fact. As Benoit points out here in the chat, Trump could reschedule weed tomorrow. 
Yeah, he could. But and he monkeys could fly out of my butt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that should have fucking happened. Anyway, like, we don't want to... That's wanna... why big pharma and shit has been... And government has been so... Why it's been so slow to be... Legalized. Anyway, we we because don't want it like, to be. Oh. We we don't want it to be rescheduled. We want it to be descheduled. Yes, exactly, descheduled. Yep. And uh, I mean, come on. Everyone knows that. I mean, okay. Let's let's talk about one. Let's compare weed to one other drug, which is alcohol. Okay, the amount of deaths that alcohol has caused versus the amount of deaths that weed has caused. Come on, people. Get real. Alcohol is a deadly drug. You know, Absolutely. and no one, it's just like people forget about that part of it sometimes. It, it bugs me because it's like alcohol is the fucking one of the deadliest drugs out there. Because more people do alcohol than they do heroin or meth, right? Right. You know? Anyway, this, uh, this New Mexico thing, they're, they're calling the campaign. There is another way um, to, to combat opioid abuse. Uh, and it says, we've taken a number of steps to fight opioid abuse in New Mexico, yeah. and I'm proud of our progress, but there is still more work to do. Uh, that's the Susanna Martinez talking. Uh, this campaign is another way we'll fight opioid addiction and abuse as we educate New Mexicans on just how dangerous it can be. You know, I don't think the opioid users really care how dangerous it is. <laughs> they just want to get high. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> nope. Fucking uh, so I it's, hate it's, that attitude. It says the campaign aims to educate parents and caregivers about a safe and alternative pain management option. The New Mexico Department of Health will help raise awareness, but all those um, safe and alternative pain management options are illegal. <laughs> anyway. The New Mexico Department of Health will help raise awareness through community events, school outreach, radio advertising, and online promotion. The NMDOH will also provide the community with information on how to recognize and treat opioid abuse. So basically, if you oh got God. if you got somebody, yeah, stop prescribing it to people. There you Fucking go. A. <laughs> Fucking a. Get rid of it. Stop making the shit. Uh, Turn people on to more like natural things, like mushrooms, which well, cures depression, and fucking weed, which helps everybody. Well, unless you're allergic to it or whatever. But come on. Oh, drives me fucking crazy. Sorry, right. I'm so tired of this bullshit. Yeah, it's just well. ridiculous. It's just asinine. And the, the the way they drink their feet with this shit. Oh, yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. It's like, oh, yeah, farmers can grow hemp in Wisconsin. But you know what? You know what you got to do is before you can do it, you got to apply for a fucking permit and shit. Or you got to have an inspection or something. Right. It's like, come on. They threw all this red tape in there. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's just, this is why I hate government so fucking much. Well, that's one reason. One reason. It's like, come <laughs> on, fucking assholes. Just let people fucking live. There you go. And do what they need to fucking do. I mean, come on. Everything, oh no, we have to regulate everything. No one could do anything on their own. It's right. like, bull fucking shit. I don't need a fucking babysitter, bitch. Right, you ain't my mother. That, I can make better decisions than you can. I don't have a fucking billion dollars in debt on my fucking ass, do I? A no, billion. I, do <laughs> I know how to fucking balance a goddamn fucking checkbook, do yeah. you? And it's not even a person, it's a thing, government. Sure, there's people that fucking do operate it, but it, it's a thing. Government is not a living thing. It is a thing. It's a non-living thing. It's a monster. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, we need it. We gotta have it. No, we do not. For what? To regulate us. Why? Why do you need, do you need regulating? You need you to do? be, you, you need you to be protected. You should go to therapy or something. Why do you personally need regulating? <laughs> You need, you need to be protected from... Are you a serial killer? Are you a child? 
Why? You, Moose, what do you Moose, mean regulating? Moose, you what? know, what? we have to protect you from yourself. No, you do not, bitch. <laughs> I can fucking, I'm on my own. I don't need you to fucking help me out. You're not helping me out. You're fucking hurting me. You're making me pay $3 more to have a fucking vehicle in this county. And, oh, besides that, I got two vehicles. So that's $60 more dollars. You fucking are taking from me when I can barely pay your $3,000 a fucking year to fucking have my house on this land. Fuck you. <laughs> What's that song? Jonathan Smith or something? Um, Sunshine? Fuck. That song, Sunshine? Fuck you, blood-sucking <laughs> motherfucking bitch. Anyway, you got... Oh, but we gotta have it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't have anarchy. No, it would be all about chaos. Bullshit! What we got right now is all in a fucking chaos. All this war and bullshit and the military industrial complex, it's out of fucking control. You're fooling yourself if you think this isn't chaos now. Right, well, like I was saying, what's that song, Jonathan, Jonathan, you know, no, right. John, Jonathan Smith or something? I forget his last name, but he, he does a song called Sunshine, and, there, and there's a line in there that says, you can't even run your own life. I'll be damned if you run mine. Right. <laughs> exactly, bitch. I don't need you. I don't need you to tell me what to fucking do. I got a fucking brain in my fucking head. And I'm not like, all in all, I'm not all kill, 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 war, war, war. No, I'm all like, let's not cut trees down. Let's go help. It makes more sense to me. Right. 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 Oh, no, no. Why? Because some rich motherfucker wants to buy another fucking house? Or a mansion? Fuck or off! Yacht. <laughs> Fuck off, bitch! Why did you get everything? And all the rest of us get shit? Yeah. What makes you so goddamn? Are you shitting gold? See? Well, let's... let's Are let's... you a sh gold shitter? Is that why you're so special <laughs> to the rest of us? That's right. Golden turds. Anyway, one of one of Taco says, government itself does no harm because it is a fictional entity. Yes. But the belief in government, the notion yes. that some people actually have the moral right to rule over others, has caused immeasurable pain and suffering, injustice and oppression, enslavement and death. Bingo. Yep. That's it. Smart boy, that That's one, Taco. Yep. Yep. And you know what? It's to buy into this and to be divided because they tell you to be divided. Because they tell you, oh yeah, those Republicans, we we believe in this. There's a Democrat, oh, we believe in this. They yeah. purposely do this well, to keep us divided. There's, there's you one don't thing. Get it. You need one, to rise <laughs> above this whole fucking fictional entity and see it for what it really is. Otherwise, you're just in their fucking trap. You're doing exactly what they want you to do. You're playing right in their fucking hand. Fight. Like, went <laughs> along with them. Believing in their shit. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know what else to say, but... I don't either, so let's play some music. I say. I can pick a shit to say. I, I don't know what to say either, so let's play some music. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll be back. Back. We're gonna hey, it's a red, it's a blood red full moon. We're supposed to have be emotionally charged during this time, and I, I, I can tell you, it's, it, I feel it. I a do. Absolutely, and uh, I feel it. Yeah. I, I, I'm surprised you guys can hear me over all that thunder going on out there. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna kick it off here with a Benoit request. Thank you very much, we really appreciate it, thank you. No, no, no. Th thank you, Robin. <laughs> that's, that's awesome stuff there. So amazing. Yes, indeed. What now? <laughs> yes, indeed, Robin Trower, two Rolling Stone from back in 1975 up at Winterland. Uh, before that, a Miss Kate request, John Prine with Picture Show, with Tom Petty sitting in. And then we kicked it off there with uh, the uh, Benoit request of R.E.M. And what's the frequency, Kenneth? 
Nice set. That was an awesome set. Yeah, well, aren't they all? Yeah, good ones, guys. Good, good hits there. Yes, indeed. Okay, so what I meant by anyone is a photographer, anyone's a camera can take a picture. But there is an art form to it as well, like catching just the right moment, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or catching, like, I have friends that are like guides out in Yellowstone National Park, and luckily I'm friends with them on Facebook, so when they take a picture, like, they post it right away. Like, I've seen moose pictures, bear pictures, baby eagle pictures. I mean, you have to be there to catch the moment, is what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Sure. And it's just so cool that I get to live vicariously through them, you know? <laughs> because Yellow, I've been to Yellowstone. It's an amazing place. It, it's seriously amazing. If you've never been there, you just you got to go to that area of the world. Um, and I, I went to Yellowstone, but I actually camped in Grand Teton National Park. And that was amazing. You know, it's around there by Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Right. And I went whitewater rafting on the river there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And that was a freaking blast, dude. I mean, that's stuff like that I'll never forget. And that was 30 years ago. You oh, know, yeah. you, you do stuff like that, you never forget it, is what I'm saying. You right, know, for right. me, I've always had the travel bug. I, I, I actually wanted to be um, a journalist, a photojournalist. That's what I wanted to be. And I should have followed that dream. <laughs> you know, shoulda. I shoulda, but yeah, that'd have been something good. That'd have been cool. Didn't, didn't do it. But anyway, that's in the past, so I can't go back there. All I can do is move forward. You can't like I've, and I've heard Grammy talk about stories on her show about not living in regret, and that's one thing I try to do. Like I do not live in regret. Because the past is the freaking past. You cannot change the fucking past. You just have to keep moving forward. Well, you could. And, but, you know what I mean? You, yeah. It's good to have memories of the past, but you don't want to fucking live there. Like, you don't want, you, you know, no matter what you want, no matter how you wish the past could be different for whatever reason, it's not different. It is what it is, and you cannot change it. Well, you could, but, but you know, then you wouldn't know that well, you had. Well, but in your theory, Grim, See, you, no, know, you, you, could, all, you know, you, you, that's you, a deeper, <laughs> like, you want to go way deep with, like, the theory and all. You, no, know. you could change the past, but, but then you wouldn't know that you did that. Right. Because right. if, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're all getting all, is, is existential now. Ex existential? It's existential. Well, how are you that word? Anyway, um, so I've learned to not dwell with the past and just move forward all the time. You know? Right. It's not, if, if you could have good memories of the past, but to try to think that you can change it or to live in regret of the past is it's a waste of time because you can't change it anyway. So why live in regret? You know what I mean? You just have to let it go. Basically. Yeah. You know, you have to let it go. Oh, by the way, howdy, Hans. <laughs> Hansel! Guten Tag! All right, now, this is, a, this, this is this is a... I should be able to talk a little bit. Like, I could say waka. Waka. That's Russian. <laughs> That's Russian. <laughs> That's not German. This is a, a little... Say, uh speak well, in what do you call those public uh, public announcements? Public PSA. Yeah, public service announcement. Yep. For anybody out there that uses a mobile yeah. device with Bluetooth, you may want to shut that shit off. Why? Uh, I recently discovered bug in many Bluetooth. Firmware and OS driver easy for me to say, yeah. Bluetooth and firm <laughs> firmware and OS drivers could allow an attacker within thirty meters, which is about a hundred feet, to capture and decrypt data shared between Bluetooth paired devices. Researchers at the Israeli Institute of Technology discovered a flaw which was flagged today by Carnegie Mellon University CERT. It affects Bluetooth secure, simple pairing, and low energy secure connections, ZDNet reports. 
as the cert notification explains the vulnerability is caused by some vendors Bluetooth implementations not properly validating the cryptographic key exchange when Bluetooth devices are pairing the flaw slipped into Bluetooth key exchange implementation which uses the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman ECDH key exchange to establish a secure connection over an insecure channel this may allow or will allow it should say uh, a nearby but remote attacker to inject a bogus public key to determine the session key during the public private pairing uh, key exchange they could then conduct a man-in-the-middle attack and passively intercept and decrypt all device messages and or forge and inject malicious messages thankfully patches are on the way Intel recommends users upgrade to the latest support drivers and check with vendors if they have provided one in their respective updates reports ZDNet Dell has released a new driver for the Qualcomm driver it uses while Lenovo's update for the flaw in Intel software LG and Huawei have referenced fixes for the some model and their respective July updates for mobile devices it's not yet known if Android Google or the Linux kernel are affected Apple has released a patch already earlier this month so just bear that in mind you folks that use like uh, best Z you were saying earlier uh, of using your Bluetooth keyboard that's that's a, a very a vulnerable device right there so unless you're at home um, I would say don't use that <laughs> don't use that uh, out in public you mean, you mean talking in the car on your cell phone to another person that's well, not, no, not just talking on the cell phone, but if you if you pair any device with it, like a a music player or a keyboard oh, okay. or a, a set of speakers, Bluetooth speakers, or oh, okay. uh, anything like that. Um, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Which is extremely there's common. There's like an accessory attached to it or something. Yeah, or even if if you if you've got your Bluetooth enabled while you're yeah. not using it, just shut it off. Besides besides the Bluetooth. Is always well, check my it. Phone, when I, I have my phone connected to it in the car, so when I turn the car, I automatically hooks it up. I, I can't shut it off. Okay. Well, anyway, it, it, take, it, take, it, it takes more work. battery. It takes up more battery when you're using that. Okay. For for another thing. Um, so if you're not using a Bluetooth device, but, I mean, if you need it, you need it. And, and you're in your car, it, just, well, it, just make sure. The beauty of Bluetooth is you can do hands-free talking on the phone. Well, well just, just make sure you pair up before you leave your driveway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. you know, you, all right. But if, but if you're, like, you're sitting at a stoplight and you start to pair it there, you got cars all around you. Oh, I see what you're saying. They, oh, okay. They, 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 could, they could attack yeah, you that so way. Yeah, it pairs it right away when I start my vehicle, so okay. then it's, like, done before I pull out of my driveway. All right. You know what I mean? All right. So, I think. I, who knows? Well, if know. it's working, you know, then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to talk about this because we were talking about this a little bit beforehand. All right. Um, I just saw this article tonight. It's from weau.com, which is my local Eau Claire news station. Okay. Um, police chief, Eau Claire crime and all rate, uh, Eau Claire crime rate is 11 year high. It says the state's law, top law enforcement officer was told Friday the overall crime rate in the city of Eau Claire is at an 11 year high. The, st the statistic was mentioned during a roundtable discussion with Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Schemmel held at the Eau Claire County Jail. Anyway, um, the information was part of the department's annual report, which was recently released. It shows a total of 2,768 crimes committed last year, a figure which hasn't eclipsed 2,500 since 2006. Mm -hmm. And most of the crimes are related to drugs. Well, I could have told you that. I mean... This is what I'm talking about. Is if weed had been legal, we wouldn't have these issues with these drugs. Right. And it is meth. It's mostly meth. And meth 
makes you, from my understanding, it makes you really crazy and psycho, and you'll do whatever you got to do to get money to get more meth. I never, I never got that from it. I, I've used meth in the past. But you're talking way back, Graham. Well, I, I don't talking, care how long no, ago it was. It's, no, it's still meth, right? I don't know. What? It's still meth, right? I don't know, dude. But okay, I'm not that, the, I see, don't know. I, I personally, I couldn't do it more than you know, like one day, and then you. But it, you're talking when it first came around. Nowadays, it's made with fucking. But, but no, 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 no. No, I'm not talking. Not, <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't affect you're, everybody that way. Okay, a, no, a friend of mine. Two different drugs, though, basically. A, a we're friend, talking about crystal back then, and we're talking meth now. No, I mean, it was crystal I, meth. I it was crystal changed. meth. Any, anyway, the ingredients have changed. Like, like I said, I, I could never become addicted on something like that because it was just. Okay, it's the it was, same it was thing. Just, it was just too 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 much of a beat down, you know, um, like the next yeah. the next day or whatever. But a friend yeah. of mine, a friend of mine that I used to party with, uh, um, he became totally stuck on it, and um, yeah, yeah, he it's I addictive. mean he he went, he went through all of his money and stuff and yep, had to wind, wind up selling his house and I, I, he might have actually lost his house. I it forget. fucks people up, dude. And, and he would, you know, yeah. he went to jail over it and shit. Yeah, and, it, was, and it, was, it was just like, why? This, this stuff is nasty. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it is. It's bad. It, it's, it's got a purpose, and and I, and I liked it for the purpose that I used it for. Um, we, we it's used, not something you can do, like. Like I said, uh, we we used to use it to go out night riding in the desert on our on our. On our on our motorcycles and ATVs. Because it was a speed buzz. Well, not only that, but it, like it opened your eyes wide up, so so you could see in the dark. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and you, you could they used to kamikaze bombers used to do it, and even World War Two bombers, the U.S. government used to fucking do it. Yeah, and you you could, ride, you could ride all night long. Over where they had to go, and they couldn't fly all that way without falling asleep, so they had to fucking. But but get the pilot something. But uh, I I mean I I I mean I don't it doesn't affect everybody that way. No, but it's bad. It's so addictive that that's why it's so bad. I, mean, I never found it to be an addictive thing. But you didn't. But you like you said it, it's not doesn't affect everybody the same. But yeah. to most people, it's highly addictive. But but that that'd be crazy to me because or it was crazy to me to. To watch right. somebody go down that have, road, because right, it was you like have different that's, control over it than other people. You have a different constitution, suppose you know what I mean. Yeah, I guess, but it was yep. you know, uh, out of all my friends that that would you know party with us and stuff, and we had a big group. He was the only one. It was only one guy. So okay, um, yeah, that wound up going down that road with it. So. Right. And, I, and I've known Coke Freak. I think if you have an addictive personality that much, though, you're going to do whatever. You know I, what I mean? I've known, I've known Coke can't. Freaks, too. Yeah. You know, there's I've known Coke Freaks, and I've known um, right. uh, uh, downer guys, guy, guys that would yep. just do downers all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and they, they were just like, that was natural for them. You, you, I mean, you couldn't, right. you know. Tell what the I mean, piece. people are gonna do what they're gonna do. You can't, you know. That's why you, you know all these people that are so worried about what other people are doing. It's why are you so worried about what other people are doing? Just let them do what they're gonna do. Right. They're not hurting you or infringing on you or hurting your property. It, what the fuck? It's your own your own personal choice what you do to yourself or to your body. And yeah, there should you know, be I all think... this regulation and all this crap. I mean. I, I think I think if it's, meth, if meth was legal, it'd be close to free. I mean, it, yeah. it's so cheap to make. Oh fuck yeah! And, and so I, I mean, it, these people right. that, that you know, um, yeah, uh, go out and steal all kinds of crap. They wouldn't have to because it's right. uh, it's so exactly. cheap. Because it would be so cheap. Yeah. You, they wouldn't have to steal to right. get it. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't right. know. Whatever. It's stupid. Yeah, it's fucked up. It, 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 Okay, we've said this for years, but it's like a broken record. But the war on drugs is never really a war on drugs. No, it's a war on people. 
Yes. It, 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 we've said that for years. I mean, okay, so speaking of this, I'm going to just do a touch on this because we've been talking about this for years on this show. Okay. And finally, it's in an article. It. Um, the collapse, or the myths, the myths of society, the myths of government. Myths, M-Y-T-H-S. I got it. Okay. Um, American society, and I forget, I think this is Grammy that I got this from. No. Yeah. But she got it from someone else. Anyway, that's how it is. Everybody um, gets stuff from everybody, so whatever. Yep. It's from the Information Clearing House, dot info. American society would collapse if it weren't for these eight myths. This is from July 26, 2018. I think she covered that on her show tonight, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, we're going to cover it. Or wait, number, no. I think... This, this number eight. I'm just going to whip through these. I'm not going to fucking take, you know. No, Rob, Rob um, Works. Rob Works posted these up in the chat earlier. Okay, Rob Works. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Okay. Myth number eight. We have a democracy. If you if you think we still have a democracy or de democr democratic republic, ask yourself this: When was the last time Congress did something that the people of America supported and did not align with corporate interests? You probably can't do it. I can't. Nope, can't be done. Number seven. Yep, we have an accountable and legitimate voting system. Okay, I'm just going to throw in my LOL <laughs> because I've realized this for a long time. That yeah. the voting system is not accountable or legitimate. Right. Okay. Number that was number seven. Number six, we have an independent media that keeps the rulers accountable. No. No. <laughs> yeah, we have the clap. Yeah, the media is controlled. The mainstream media is controlled by the government. They tell the mainstream media what to say and what not to say. Yeah. No, it's it's. Number five. it's that's, we that's, have an that's, independent you know, judiciary. Corporate layman's propaganda. That's why. That's yeah. why. That's the media. Yeah. Clap. Right. Number five. We have an independent judiciary. No, the the criminal justice system has become a weapon wielded by the corporate state. This is how bankers can foreclose on millions of homes illegally and see no jail time. But activists often serve jail time for nonviolent civil disobedience. Hello. <laughs> Who's protected here? Not me and you. Nope. No. Them. Them. Uh, number four. The police are here to protect you. They're your <laughs> friends. Um, no. No, no, no. They are not your friends, and the protect and serve went out the window a long fucking time ago. <laughs> they work for who they work for. Who pays them? No, I, I, I like the first <laughs> line. I like the first what? line under that there. It says, that's funny. I don't recall my friend pressuring me into sex to get out of a speeding ticket. Exactly. <laughs> right. And yeah. you know that shit goes on. Absolutely. You know it does. Yeah. So they're not legit. They're not up and up. Okay, number three. Buying will make you happy. Yeah, to advertisers. Oh, so this myth is put forward mainly by the floods of advertising that we take in, but also by our social engineering. Most of us feel a tenacious emptiness and alienation deep down behind our surface emotions. That uneasiness is because we are most most of us are flushing away our lives at jobs we hate before going home to seclusion boxes called houses or apartments. We then flip on the TV to watch reality shows about people who have it worse than we do. <laughs> Which we all find hilarious. If we're lucky, we'll make enough money during the week to afford enough beer on the weekend to help it all make sense. I find it takes at least four beers for everything to add up. That's from the <laughs> article. But that doesn't truly bring us fulfillment. So what now? Well, the ads say buying will do it. Try to smother the depression and desperation <laughs> under a blanket of flat screen TVs, purses, and jet skis. Now, does your life have meaning? No. Well, maybe you have to drive that just be a little faster. Crank it up until your baby flies off, and you'll feel alive. 
The dark truth is that we have to believe the myth that consuming is the answer or else we won't keep running around the wheel. If we aren't running around the wheel, then we start thinking, start asking questions. Those questions are not good for the ruling elite. Who enjoy who enjoy a society based on the daily exploitation of 99% of us? Ooh, that was well, well written there. I like that. Right? Oh yeah, it's Lee Camp wrote this, huh? Okay, he's he's pretty funny. Yeah, and if you no, myth number two is if you work hard, things will get better. We told this from the day we're fucking born, basically. Until we're fucking thirteen, or a teenager, you can fucking mow the lawn, you can fucking babysit, you can do this to make money, right? If you work hard, things will get better. This is myth number two. According to Delatte, or however you say that, Shift Index Survey, 80% of people are dissatisfied with their jobs. That's because it's just a job. It's not what they really want to be doing. Right. You know, and the average person spends 90,000 hours at work over their lifetime. That's over one-seventh of your life, and most of it is during your most productive years. Ask yourself what we're working for. To make money? For what? Almost none of us are doing jobs for survival anymore. Once upon a time, jobs boiled down to, I plant the food, I eat the food. If I don't plant the food, I die. But nowadays, if you want, if you work at a cafe, will someone die if they don't get their super calf mocha frap almond piss latte? I kind of doubt they'll keel over from a blueberry stone deficiency. If you work at Macy's, will customers perish if they don't get those boxer briefs with the sweat absorbent ass fabric? I doubt it. <laughs> and then do they, if they do die from that, then their problems were far greater than you could have ever known. <laughs> so that means we're all working to make other people rich because we have a society in which we have to work. Technological advances can do most everything that truly must get done. So if we wanted to, we could get rid of most of the work, most work, and have tens of thousands of more hours to enjoy our lives. But we're not doing that at all, and no one's allowed to ask these questions. Not on your mainstream airwaves, at least. Even a half-step like universal basic income is barely discussed because it doesn't compute with our cultural programming. Yeah, it oh, doesn't yeah. compute. Well, that, that's one thing about this Lee Camp guy is he's a total socialist. Oh, okay. So that's why he. Science can say it's quite possible artificial intelligence will take away all human jobs in 120 years. I think they know that will happen because bots will take the jobs and they realize that 80 percent of them don't need to be done. No, he's making sense to me. I mean, no, he makes bit. sense. Totally he makes right. sense about a lot of stuff, but like I said, he's yeah. total socialist. Okay, good to know. But anyway. One day we will build monuments to the bot that told us to enjoy our lives and leave the shirts wrinkly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and this leads me to the largest myth of our American society. Myth number one, you are free. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the millions locked up in our prisons. I'm talking about you and me. If you think you're free, try running around with your nipples out, ladies. Guys, take a dump on the street and see how free you are. I understand there are certain restrictions on freedom we actually desire to have in our society. Maybe you're not crazy about everyone leaving a Stanley steamer in the middle of your walk to work, but a lot of our lack of freedom is not something you would vote for if given a chance. Try building a fire in a parking lot to keep warm in the winter. Try sleeping in your car for more than a few hours without being harassed by police. Try maintaining your privacy for a week without a single email, web search, or location data set collected by the NSA and the telecom. Try signing up for the military because you need college money, and then one day just walking up the base going, yeah, I was bored. Thought I would just not do this anymore. Try explaining to Kentucky Fried Chicken that while you don't have the green pieces of paper they want to exchange for the mashed potatoes, you do have some pictures you've drawn in a napkin for them instead. <laughs> oh, uh, try running for president as a third party candidate <laughs> oh, try using the restroom at Starbucks without buying something while black I don't know how true that one is but anyway I'm not gonna this is, this is pretty funny um, 
Grimner and I have discussed these issues for years on the Freakers Ball. We've brought up these things time and again, year after year. Um, I just think that was kind of well written. That was pretty funny. Oh, sure, yeah. And um, someone posted in my Facebook, go look at the moon. So if where you're at is not cloudy, maybe go give it a look, you see. It's a blood moon, supposedly. Yeah. Cool. And I'm feeling it. I mean, right, I love well, the sight of the moon. It looks so gorgeous. I saw it when I was driving home a little bit earlier, and it was just like, oh, my God. All right, well, crank, crank, crank up your computer speakers and listen to this set while you're out there staring at the moon. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Can't do people. <laughs> well, you have to actually watch this. Well, you don't have to, but I recommend. <laughs> watch the first video, then during the second two videos. Go out and stare at the moon. <laughs> So nice, so nice. Ina Forsman there uh, with the Helga Tavquist band. What have I done? Yeah, Ina's out of uh, Helsinki, Finland, and uh, she's just she's just great. Anyway, uh, before that, Iron Maiden with the Prisoner. It actually was the '80s rock, 1982. Now that I look, um, and we kicked it off there with End of Green doing Dead Generation. Oh, uh, yeah. Music. You gotta love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you don't have to, but I do. <laughs> oh, man. Well, 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 well. What do we got next? Here? Yes, I love music as well. I know you do. <laughs> oh, by the way, how, how how was the uh, show last week? Oh, my God. It was amazing. Like, Rebel and Earth, they were in Oregon. Like, playing at the Northwest Trench Summit Thursday and Friday night. And then Saturday, they flew to Wisconsin to play at the Moon Dance Festival. But I was at. Yeah. Isn't that fucking cool? That is fucking cool. Yeah, and Rebel and Earth... They're like a new, tiny bluegrass. Like, I wouldn't consider them traditional bluegrass, but because they have a drum set and they have, like, an electric guitar. But they're freaking good, dude. They are good. Cool. And they killed it. Like, it was so freaky to see them on Thursday night online from Oregon, and all of a sudden I'm there on Saturday and they're there. Yeah. I'm seeing them live. That was, like, trippy as hell. Well, that, that's <laughs> like, awesome. 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 Yeah, it was great. And then Jeff Austin was before them, and he killed it. He did a couple of dead songs. He's just amazing. He's really good at mandolin. He's awesome. Him and his band. Cool, cool. And then Railroad Earth came on. Oh, my God. And that was Friday night. It was Jeff Austin. And Railroad Earth was Saturday night. But then my friend's band, Monsters of Grass, they played an awesome set. There were just so many good bands there. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah, sounds terrific. And the terrific. venue was new, so it was like they have this huge building made out of wood. There's mm -hmm. like two stages. There's like one that's outside and one that's inside, like where it's covered. Right. They have this huge bar there. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a great venue. It was fun. It's totally good. Yeah, very nice grounds. No chiggers. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It rained a little bit, so it was a little bit muddy, but not bad. I mean, it wasn't a total washout, you know, so yeah. it was fun. Really good. It was a good time. Yeah, no eclipse for us, Chloe. We didn't get the eclipse. Well, we don't get to see it in the U.S. It was Hopefully. everywhere in the world except for the U.S. got it. Right. Lucky <laughs> us, right? Well, uh, yeah. Whatever. We get what, yeah, we, we, get what we get. <laughs> right. Oh man. But, okay, yeah, we got we got to um, we got to talk about this. Okay. And and I know I've talked about it probably on the last couple of weeks or whatever, but and and it's not about what it's about. Okay. But there's been an explosion of memes about this uh, particular subject. 
over the last uh, week or so. And the subject is straws. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now, we talked about it the last couple of weeks. They've yeah. been banning and 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 uh, banning straws you know, and 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 making them illegal in various places, and then like Starbucks <laughs> totally got rid of them. This is not about straws. You may look at it as so what? It's straws. I don't use straws anyway. Who cares about straws? The thing about it is, it's this little thing that they're taking and they're doing horrible things to what you thought you had, a little, the freedom to use a straw <laughs> is now a crime. It's crazy. It's not just they're banning it, but here we go from the nationalreview.com. Santa Barbara authorizes jail time for handing out straws. Jail time. <laughs> For straws. <laughs> no, the the city of Santa Barbara has passed an ordinance that will well, allow California for you. That that will allow. Well, it's, don't think it's not coming your way. That I don't. I'm sure it is. That I'm will allow rest. California. It'll it'll allow restaurant employees to be punished with up to six months of jail, and or a one thousand dollar fine. Okay, after well, just don't give us straws then. After a second offense of giving out plastic straws to the customers. The bill was passed unanimously, unanimously last Tuesday, and covers bars, restaurants, and other food service businesses. Establishments will still be allowed to hand out plastic straws, but only if the customer requests them. Santa okay. Barbara's Santa Barbara's ordinance is likely the most severe straw ban in the country at this point in time, according right. to reason. But it's far from the only straw ban. Seattle banned plastic straws earlier this month, making mandating a $250 fine for violators. Santa Barbara, however, Santa Barbara, however, has gone much further than Seattle, wow. even aside from the harsher punishments it law imposes. Santa wow. Barbara has banned not only plastic straws, but also compostable straws. Oh, really? Come on! Oh, oh, and each individual straw counts as a separate infraction. What? Come on! Meaning that if someone Fucking got <laughs> if someone got busted handing out oh straws to a table of four, he or she could wind up facing years behind like bars. A bar that has those little red straws for like six. Uh, they can't, can't have. No, nope, no, nope, no, no more of those. Oh, even, oh, even, even the wooden oh. ones. You're not allowed those either. Because you're fingering out a stir your drink. That's right, and and then and then make sure that's not the finger you just picked your nose or scratch your ass right. with. Right. Yeah, or wipe your <laughs> ass with. Right. It says, now I'm a reasonable person. I may be that's libertarian, crazy. but I'm glad we live in a society with laws. <laughs> For example, I'm glad that if a person say murders another person, then that murderer has to go to prison. That seems fair <laughs> oh, to me. Well, right. <laughs> but six months in jail for handing a little piece of plastic to another person? I feel like you'd have to be bananas to think that's even close to fair. This is especially true when you consider just how small an impact the straw bands are. Yeah, so, if nothing else is made out of plastic. Hello, people. Have you seen how much <laughs> shit's made out of fucking plastic? It's not just fucking straws. Oh, it's because straws can go up turtles' noses. Uh, That's why you got them. So straws can go up a turtle's fucking nose, or a shark's nose, or a dolphin's nose. So that's why they're attacking straws, because of the fucking wild, aquatic wildlife. But what I'm saying is, have you paid attention to how much shit's made out of plastic lately? And plastic doesn't biodegrade. It breaks down in tiny fucking pieces. So really, whenever you take a glass of water, you're drinking fucking bit little pieces of plastic. Whether or not you want to believe that, we're at that point in time right now. Because that's where we're at. That's how long plastic's been in our system and okay. our society. Well, here, so now we're drinking the fucking shit. Well, listen to this here. Straws represent only about 0.02% right. of the amount of plastic waste that is estimated to go, to go into the ocean each year. Right. What's more, 
the United States, the entire United States, is responsible only for 1% of the total amount of plastic waste in the ocean overall. Exactly. 1% oh, for the entire that, United that. States. Fuck. All things considered, so this... <laughs> in landfills. Yeah. All things considered, this new ordinance isn't going to be making a real dent in the problem it's intended to solve, but it could create some harm. As Reason explains, straw bans could end up having a negative impact on disabled people who cannot drink without them. Still, plastic straw bans are becoming more popular. There are efforts to ban them in New York City, San Francisco, Portland, Washington, D.C., colleges nationwide, oh from, Knox, from, from Knoxville to Illinois. But you ban the auto industry from using so much plastic on their vehicles then. Okay, so Knox, <laughs> Knox College in Illinois yeah. to the University of Portland. Are you going to ban using so much plastic? How about fucking Tupperware? You fucking asshole. Okay. Fuck off with your shit. Well, Blame the consumer. They always do this to us. It, 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 it never is, is on the manufacturer. Oh, but, no, but, but here's the consumer. But no, here's we're going to blame the consumer. We made this product, but now we're going to punish them for using it. What? Come on. Here, here's my problem with the whole thing. Come on. If they can ban straws, make straws a crime to use, to right. have, what can't they ban? What can't exactly. they ban? Is there anything that that is... Beyond their their reach of banning, no, at this that's point. What the problem is with government; they can just fucking keep going and going, and people support this. Oh well, yeah, we gotta have some kind of government. It's gotta be it's gotta be my way or no way. And the thing that, I'm unreasonable. And what, once they create a ban on a on a thing, then they move to the enforcement section. Yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. You're going to fucking seriously arrest people and shit for using a fucking straw? Why don't you, you arrest ab the absolutely. fucking CEO of Ford for allowing vehicles to be made with so much fucking plastic? Well, they're, they're absolutely going to arrest people because that's what they do. This, this is yeah. some law that's written, so... Uh, some guy, he's out there wearing his stupid little costume with his right. stupid little tin badge on it, and he sees somebody handing a straw to a customer. He's got to go in there and enforce the law because that's what he is. That, that's that's his job, and so he right. don't care that it. No, he don't give a fuck. That, that it doesn't cause anybody any. Just like he sees you smoking a joint, he don't care that's causing nobody no harm. No. He's gonna come and get you for it. Yep. Because God dang it, it's illegal. That's right, it, and and he's, he'll tell you, oh, I don't write the laws, I just I just enforce them. Right. He's a zombie robot. Yep. That. <laughs> so this, this whole straw thing, I mean, I I don't like I said, I don't personally care about straws. I don't use straws. I can't remember the last time I had a drink with a straw in it. <laughs> <laughs> but but the totalitarianism of it all, the, yeah, the, the, the tyranny, insane. the tyranny. Of these straw yes, things. Yes, it's insane. Stupidity. It, it, it's it's just it's just nuts, and and. Uh, yep. I I I just I just. <laughs> I know I know, dude. You can't make this shit up. We can't. Like the onion's gonna go defunct because they're on a satire. They can't. Yeah. No, I saw I saw that meme. The satires. <laughs> they, they can't make losing. up shit that's more really ridiculous right. than what's happening. The, real, the reality is more fucking... Yeah, it's fucked up. Dude. It's getting weird. <sighs> we knew this would happen. We. It's not like we... It's a surprise, but... All right, well, well enough, of a, enough of a rant on straws okay. and, and the ramifications of, of right. them creating laws like that. This is an old article that I want to share with you from uh, 2015. And it's something you and I, and most people here already know, but I'm going to share it anyway. It's from higherperspectives.com. Groundbreaking research. Cannabis treats ADHD better than Adderall. 
Yeah, that's right. The medical use of marijuana is new, no secret. It can be used to treat a number of ailments, chronic and short term. According to a groundbreaking new medical study of 30 patients with ADHD, all 30 reported improved concentration in sleep as well as reduced impulsivity after using the medical cannabis. These 30 patients all reported having limited success with conventional treatments like Ritalin and Adderall. 22 of the 30 patients opted to forego their previously prescribed medications and use marijuana to manage their symptoms instead. It's a small sample group, yet an incredibly positive development. Cannabis appears, they say, which it should say absolutely rather than appears, but cannabis absolutely treats ADD and ADHD by increasing the availability of dopamine, said Dr. Behrman, a, ca Wait, a cannabinoidologist. Now there's a job for you. <laughs> Moose, could you be a cannabinoidologist? <laughs> I think you could. Anyway, uh, this then has the same effect, but it's a different mechanism of action than stimulants like Ritalin and Dexedrine amphetamine, uh, which act by binding the dopamine and, and interfering with the metabolic breakdown of dopamine. Basically, cannabinoids in marijuana correct dopamine shortages in the brain that's seen with people who have ADHD. Right now, Colorado and California are the only two states that allow prescription of medical marijuana to treat ADHD. With any luck, more studies like this one will move to more states to allow treatment. So, again, this is 2015. I don't know if there's more states by now or not. Um, but they all, all the states... I think there, there is more states now. All, all the states Minnesota have... Minnesota has medical marijuana now. Well, yeah, but all all the states have like limited lists. Right, it's of limited, things. but it's you know things. it's getting better, I guess. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Authoritarian Puritans. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just the word authoritarian should like make you want to puke. It should absolutely. Because you need a babysitter. I mean, these people are up there. They're insane. Oh, yeah. People that call themselves your leaders or whatever. It's like making the decisions. It's like, really? Ooh. Oop. Yeah. Now, I, I had a couple of stories about cops, but I'm going to forego them because... Yeah. Shit, it's getting late. What? It's getting late. Oh, well, besides that, I, I, I don't, you know... Need to get into all that. Right, heavy, we heavy, can talk about that every week. That heavy like, duty crap. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it, yeah. Um, we purposely don't talk about that every week. <laughs> and, I, and I touched on this last week, but here's another article about it. Uh, all right. What Chrome's not secure warning for unencrypted HTTP sites websites really means, and if anybody hadn't noticed yet. Uh, RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz are both fully HTTPS encrypted sites now. Okay. Cool. Um, it was a lot of work, but I did it. Anyway, it says, it doesn't mean you've been hacked, but that you could be hacked. <laughs> anyway, Google is taking a more aggressive role in encouraging websites to encrypt their connections to protect user data. And the reason I never did that with Real Liberty Media or RLM Radio XYZ is we don't collect anybody's data. Whatever. Chrome 68 starts rolling out today, which this was uh, the 24th, so a few days ago. And browser, update, uh, and browser update labels any site that is not using HTTPS with a valid certificate as not secure in the address bar, which means people will leave your site because... They don't trust it. Right, them. right. So that's the reason I did it, um, and, Good. and and the fact Good that in the in the fact that HostGator handed out free uh, certificates to everybody. Good. Good. <laughs> nice <laughs> job. Way to go. Yeah. Anyway, so if anybody and a lot of people use Chrome, I think it's like fifty fifty odd percent of people um, use use Chrome as as a browser, which 
confuses the hell right. out of me. Right, and I use some. I, I use it at work, but I don't use it at home. Yeah. So since so many people use Chrome and 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 they're basically forcing people to use the HTTPS. Um, right, right. We're on it. We're on it now. <laughs> oh, good, good. We're cool. Uh, uh, Thank you for the being uh, on that. That's uh, awesome. Your your non collected data is now protected. <laughs> awesome. Great. <laughs> well. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, anyway. I know, I know. <laughs> I shared a link for how to build an aquaponic garden. Oh, nice! On a PVC pipe, and you know, we all gotta start. Well, I do. I want. I'm gonna start thinking outside the box. So it's like I was like pigeonholed for a while because I had to raise children. So now I'm like. Trying to be creative and think outside the box more and get out of this shit. Well, as the as the kid in the Matrix would say, paraphrasing, uh -huh. don't don't try to destroy the box. Just realize the truth. Right. There is exactly. no box. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we got to do our last set here. All right, let's do that. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, Thanks absolutely, we folks. We love y'all. We do. Freaky people. That's right. Rob Zombie. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's from Birmingham. Way down in Alabama. That's a Ram Jam doing Black Betty there for you for back in 1977. Uh, before that, we had Eric Sardinas and My Baby's Got Something. Bob Marley with Redemption Song from the Legend album. And we kicked it off there with Rob Zombie Dead City Radio and the new Gods of Supertown. Uh-huh, good music all around. So that completes yep. the Freaker's Ball Black Betty sandwich. And there's so many yep. layers in that sandwich. Wow, <laughs> so many. I mean, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, there Betty, was... With Betty fucking Page, yeah, she was hot. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was well, hot, that's way a big hot. stuff there. And, 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 and <laughs> oh, never mind. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> there will be no dark table tomorrow. Uh, oh come on! Well, Vince can't get internet, and and Hans and, and Hans and Flash doesn't like doing the show alone. That's all right. I mean, so. maybe I can do something, but I don't know. And you could I'll you could jump on there with Flash. So oh my god! Yeah, you could you could do it with Flash. I could try. Yeah. I could try it. You know, anyway, I could go on with Flash. I mean, we've so done and, it before. If you jump in, then then we'll have a a dork table. Otherwise, we won't. Well, yeah, I haven't seen them yet, so. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> that's it for tomorrow, if if that's on or yep. not. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the blues and the trivia here in the chat. And then Hal yep. Anthony behind the woodshed opening up the big old can of whooping ass. Whooping ass. Whooping ass. And then the Grammy, of course, again on Wednesday, but not on next Friday because that's her birthday. And she'll be 29 or so. Yes, she will. <laughs> 29 or so. But what, you're, you're going to be here next Friday night? What's the week? Uh, yeah, uh, I think so. Maybe, maybe not. I'll let you know. <laughs> so there's a definite maybe for next week. Yeah, Freakers. <laughs> definite maybe. <laughs> Probably, but I'm not sure yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks, so, everybody, yeah. for uh, tuning in, chatting, yeah, uh, making requests. Everyone and listening to our, our foolishness as we jab around. Right. And have a great weekend. Yeah. Kick-ass weekend.